just like any other type of electronic device, your Synology NAS will eventually become an end-of-life product. When this happens, your NAS will no longer be able to receive software update security patches or new versions of Disk Station Manager. So while a Synology NAS should provide you with roughly 6-7 to seven years of service, because our NAS was purchased in 2013, it will not be upgradable to DSM-7, so we've decided to decommission it. Before we get started, we should point out that we've already transferred all of the data from our old NAS over to our new NAS. We did this by manually configuring a new NAS and then copying the data from the network shares on our old NAS over to our new NAS. One of the main problems with decommissioning any electronic device is ensuring that no personal data remains on it. However, when it comes to using magnetic disks, if we were to just format our drives, it's possible to still recover data from those drives. So in order to decommission our Synology NAS and maintain the security of the data on our old hard drives, we're going to need to complete a three-step process. First, we're going to perform a factory reset on our Synology NAS, which will complete an initial wipe of all user accounts, system settings, applications, and data. However, as it's still possible to recover data after performing a factory reset, we're also going to perform a secure wipe on each of the drives in our NAS. Then as a final step, we're going to suggest a couple of ways to disable our old hard drives before we dispose of them. Let's get started by first logging into our old NAS using our administrator's credentials. Now from within the DSM, if we select Control Panel, when Control Panel opens, under the heading System, we need to locate the option Update and Restore. From within Update and Restore, we now need to choose the tab called System Reset. Within System Reset, we have a heading called Factory Reset. It is under this heading that we can restore our NAS back to its original manufacturer settings and erase any data stored on our hard drives. While this will not be a secure wipe of all of our data, this is a good starting point, so let's select Erase All Data. We're now prompted to confirm that we wish to remove our data and restore our NAS back to its factory defaults. So let's tick the box next to I understand all my data will be deleted forever and be unrecoverable. We now need to wait 5 seconds before we can select the Erase All Data button. We're now asked to enter our administrator's password in order to continue with the reset. When we select Submit, a pop-up window will appear informing us that our NAS is restarting and that once the restart process has been completed, we can use Synology Assistant to search for and connect back to our NAS. After our NAS has rebooted, we can confirm that our NAS has been returned to its factory default by trying to connect to it. If from the address bar of our browser, we type find.synology.com, when we press enter on our keyboard, the Synology Assistant will search our home network and give us the option to reconnect to our old NAS. If we select Connect, after agreeing to Synology's end user license agreement, we're presented with the option to reset up our NAS from scratch. However, as we will be decommissioning this NAS, we will simply power it down so that we can move on to the next stage. A secure wipe is when the whole of a hard drive is overwritten multiple times with random or unknown data. So we've decided to perform a secure wipe which will be compliant with the US Department of Education standards. However, in order to perform a secure wipe, we will need to remove each of the hard drives from the drive bays of our NAS and then using either a hard drive docking station or USB external enclosure, connect our drives to a computer. First, we need to remove the caddies on all of the hard drives that came from our NAS. As we will be demonstrating how to perform a secure wipe using both Windows and Mac OS, we've decided to use a multi-bay USB hard drive docking station. So if we now plug one of our hard drives into our docking station and connect the dock to our computer, we're going to get started by first taking a look at how you perform a secure wipe using Mac OS. 
when we power up our hard drive docking station, macOS will automatically detect that a hard drive has been connected to our computer. However, because the hard drive that came from our NAS was formatted in a format that macOS does not recognize, we're presented with three options, eject, ignore, and initialize. As we need macOS to recognize this drive in order to perform a secure wipe, we're going to select initialize. After we select initialize, disk utility will open and the hard drive from our NAS will be displayed under external storage. If we select our NAS drive, in the main panel, we're presented with additional information about that drive. However, by selecting arrays and then from the dialog window choosing security options, we can access the settings for the type of wipe that we wish to do. As you can see, we have a sliding bar which will allow us to choose from four different types of secure wipe. So starting from the left, we have fastest, which will simply format our drive without performing a secure wipe. The next option will write a pass of random data, then write a pass of zeros over the entire drive. While this is more secure than the first option, it is still possible to recover data from this method of wipe. We next have an option that will write two passes of random data, then a single pass of known data over the whole of our disk. The final option is to write multiple passes of zeros, ones and random data over our entire disk. While this is the most secure option, it will also be the slowest option to use, so we've decided to use the third option, which also happens to be Department of Education compliant. After selecting OK, if we choose an alternative format to the one that we used on our NAS, we will further scramble our data. When we select arrays, our secure wipe will begin. Performing a secure wipe will take a considerable amount of time. For example, to securely wipe this relatively small 1.5 terabyte hard drive, it took our computer roughly 12 hours to complete. Once our secure wipe has been completed, we have an option that will allow us to review the log relating to our secure wipe. If we now select Done, we're returned to Disk Utility. We can now power down our docking station. However, we need to wait until the disks in our hard drive stop spinning before we remove the drive. Let's now take a look at how we perform a secure wipe in Windows 10. First, we're going to log into Windows 10 using an account with administrator's credentials. Now to perform a secure wipe, we need to connect one of the hard drives from our NAS to our PC. So once again, we will use our USB hard drive docking station. Just like macOS, after switching on our dock, Windows will not recognize the format of the hard drive from our NAS. So if we open File Explorer, our NAS drive will not be displayed. In order for Windows to be able to see our NAS drive, we're going to need to initialize the drive. To do this, if we right click on the start button, a quick menu will appear. Now from the menu, we need to select the option disk management. Within disk management, the drive from our NAS should be listed. However, it can be difficult to spot. As you can see here, disk zero is the internal hard drive being used by our Windows computer. We know this because this drive contains a partition called C and C drive is usually the default location where Windows is installed. This means that on our computer, disk 1 is the hard drive from our NAS. So in order for Windows to be able to see disk 1, we will need to initialize it. To do this, if we select disk 1 and then click the right button on our mouse, a quick menu will be displayed. From within the quick menu, we first need to select delete volume. We are now warned that the selected partition was not created by Windows and that there may be data that can be read from other computers that will be lost. Let's select yes. As the hard drive from our NAS is still not viewable by our computer, we now need to right click on disk one for a second time and then from the quick menu choose new simple volume. A wizard will appear, so if we select next, we are prompted to specify a volume size. 
as this needs to be the whole of our hard drive, we will simply select Next. We are now asked to assign a drive letter or path, so we need to make a mental note of what drive letter our NAS has been assigned with. After clicking Next, we are asked which format we wish to use. While it's not important as to which format we use, we do need to make a note of what the volume label is. To make this easier later on, let's change the volume label from New Volume to Untitled. When we select Next and then Finish, our hard drive is formatted and Windows will be able to mount the drive. However, let's confirm this by once again opening File Explorer. As you can see, we now have a drive called Untitled assigned to the drive letter of F. We're now ready to perform a secure wipe on this drive. However, in order to do this, we will need to revert to a command prompt. If we select Search and then type CMD, the Windows command prompt application will be listed. When we press Enter on our keyboard, a command prompt will open. Now from the flashing insertion point, if we type format F, colon, which will instruct our computer to format F drive, and then forward slash P, colon 3, to instruct our computer to pass random data over our hard drive three times, when we press enter on our keyboard, we're prompted to enter the current volume label for F drive. After typing untitled, and then pressing enter on our keyboard, Windows will ask us to confirm that we wish to format F drive. When we press the Y key on our keyboard, the secure wipe will begin. As performing a secure wipe will take a considerable amount of time, even though this drive is relatively small, it still took roughly 5 hours to complete a secure wipe. Once the wipe has been completed, we're asked to give the drive volume a label, so we're going to reuse Untitled. When we press enter on our keyboard, we're informed that Windows has completed a format of our drive, so we can now close the command prompt and disconnect the wiped hard drive from our computer. We can now power down our docking station, however we need to wait until the disks in our hard drive stop spinning before we remove the drive. We're now ready to complete the final stage in the decommissioning of our Synology NAS. As high capacity hard drives are expensive, if you have hard drives in your old Synology NAS that are relatively new, you might want to consider repurposing those drives. However, while the obvious option is to simply fit your old hard drives to your new NAS, you need to use caution as old drives that have been continually run for more than a couple of years could have wear and tear that potentially will make them less reliable. So while it should be okay, to repurpose our old hard drives into our new NAS, an alternative option is to place our old hard drives into external USB enclosures. These external hard drive enclosures can then be used to either store files or as a way to make backups on our new NAS. However, if the drives in our old NAS are faulty or do not have a storage capacity large enough to be useful, before we dispose of them, we need to think about completing one final stage. In an ideal world, we would send our old hard drives to a certified secure data destruction center. However, as these types of disposal and recycle companies can often be very expensive to use, we've decided to take our old hard drives to our local municipal dump. So while we have now performed a secure wipe, that should be good enough to keep our data safe, as an additional layer of protection to further discourage someone from trying to recover our data, we're going to destroy the platters inside our old hard drives. One way to do this is to drill holes through our old hard drives, which will in turn destroy the platters. However, as this is a little dangerous, we're going to suggest a couple of alternatives. As 2.5 inch hard drives tend to use glass platters, if we hit our drive with enough force, the platters should shatter. However, when it comes to 3.5 inch hard drives, as they use aluminium platters, it's highly unlikely that even a large amount of force will shatter the platters. 
So for each of our 3.5 inch hard drives, we're going to dismantle the drives. We are then going to individually score both sides of each of the aluminium platters that we find in the drives. This is to make sure that no data can be recovered from these drives. So to summarize, as our old NAS has now been restored to its factory defaults and its old hard drives have either been repurposed, securely wiped or destroyed, it should now be safe to dispose of our old Synology NAS.